Broadcasting from Manhattan Beach and the World Wide Web, you're listening to CHSR HealthyLife.net. As a service to our listeners, this program is for general information and entertainment purposes only. CHSR HealthyLife.net does not recommend, endorse, or object to the views, products, or topics expressed or discussed by show hosts or their guests. We suggest you always consult with your own personal, medical, financial, or legal advisor. things in beauty. Welcome to Radio A&B, designed for those who want to live a long and vibrant life. I'm Patty Smucker, who's been in the beauty industry for over 40 years. Radio A&B, which stands for American Made Beauty, is where we tell the secrets behind the making of health and beauty products. Now, our sponsor today is AmericanMadeBeauty.com, a beauty platform designed to help consumers find beauty companies that are implementing the industry's best practices to bring you quality and pro- quality products and services. Go to AmericanMadeBeauty.com and you'll find beauty products and services that meet a strict set of standards that reflect your Amer- their American heritage. If you want to sample some of our brands, click on the consumer page and sign up for your free American Made Beauty box. Customize with brands that you want to try and with products that are selected just for you. That's AmericanMadeBeauty.com. Now, you know, as many of you know who have been listening to, to my show for a while, um, my history is as a hairdresser. I actually started out working behind the chair uh, many years ago and uh, did hair uh, for a long time and then um, got very interested when um, artificial nails began. And I worked uh, as a nail specialist for a number of years, bent over a manicuring table, uh, filing nails, uh, and then got interested in aesthetics and worked as an esthetician. Uh, doing facials, and that led me to my interest in makeup, which led me to my interest in massage, and uh, the practice of all of what I call the physical arts of the beauty industry. And it is. It's a very physical job. Um, The the artists that are focused on the craft are generally focused on on actually doing the craft and the client, and they oftentimes forget to take care of uh, their own selves. So today's show is about a medical professional that's dedicated his service to helping others and specifically helping beauty professionals. Dr. Jonas Aford is a chiropractor and a published author that's been helping salon professionals optimize their physical health, avoid injury, and manage specific conditions. During our feature segment today, you'll meet Dr. Jonas and learn how he started his practice, why chiropractic work is important to health. You'll hear how he's discovered the needs of beauty professionals and how he spent his time observing the professional in the beauty environment to find the activities done by professionals that cause injury. In our segment that we call In the Jar, we'll focus on what the doctor has learned by observing professionals in action and some tips and tricks to avoid injuries by functional areas in the professional market. And then in our segment we call Beauty That's Sold Deep, we'll continue our conversation and hear how, if you're looking for a chiropractor in your area, how to find a qualified one to optimize your health. Finally, we'll wrap up today with Dr. Jonah's vision for the future and the types of partners he's looking for to attract and to scale his program to serve a wider audience of people around the world. So let's get started. Let me tell you just a little bit more about Dr. Jonas Aford, a chiropractor and a consultant based in Toronto, Canada. Uh, He was fascinated by health and human conditions, and he first studied philosophy at the University of Calgary and later became a doctor of chiropractic through the Canadian Memorial Chiropractic College. A keen problem solver, the desire to educate hairstylists developed as out of his experience in treating them. Welcome, Doctor. We're delighted to have you with us today. Thank you so much for the elaborate introduction and for sharing your story. It's well, great to be a part of uh, such a good organization and a wonderful show. Well, thank you very much. Tell us a little bit about um, the practice. What drew you to uh, to become a chiropractor? That's a good question. Um, the story goes back to my childhood. 
and uh, I grew up in Papua New Guinea. And in our community, we had uh, one hotel in the whole district, and so they had a really nice swimming pool, and my parents would take me and my siblings there to swim uh, a few times a week, and while we were swimming, they would visit the chiropractor, who they shortly uh, introduced us to. And he was this giant man. He was like six foot eight or something like that and just really, really tall. And I just was in awe when I saw him because not only was he exceptionally tall, but most people in Papua New Guinea are relatively short, particularly compared to Europeans and North Americans. And so um, I remember asking my dad very distinctly, I said, Dad, how did he get so tall? I want to be that tall. And my dad said, well, he's a chiropractor. Must be that. <laughs> and so from that day when I was six years old, I thought, okay, that's, that's my uh, <laughs> that's my new ambition. Um, the, the the more realistic story is um, once I was in my undergraduate degree and trying to trying to pick a, a career direction that was meaningful and rewarding, um, I just really methodologically set out to um, witness uh, what a day in the life of each type of professional that I was interested in was like. And so I, I went around to lawyers, to dentists, to, to family doctors, to sports doctors, and orthopedic surgeons, to um, you know finance people. To I had a whole list of about uh, I think it was 43 different professions. I found a person doing that that would welcome me into their office for a few hours or a day, and I just shadowed them. And um, and then the ones that I thought were interesting, I would shadow other people so that I could take away the bias of that individual I was with. And um, it was a really um, eye-opening experience because I, I realized very quickly, often within an hour of being in someone's office, what that life was like, what their energy was, how engaged they were in their work, what they loved doing. If they hated what they were doing, that was obvious too. And, and it was night and day. Chiropractors were vibrant, passionate people. They loved their lifestyles. They were all active. They were just enthusiastic and they were teaching their patients. They were doing a lot of manual work, moving around a lot. And that combination, a wonderful combination of things that defined the career as I saw it, uh, was very unique and definitely set it apart amongst all the other careers that I considered. So um, it just, that was the, the thing that made it click and so I pursued it. I chose the, the school that best suited me and, and here I am. And the, so your, your keen powers of observation is this something that, that uh, actually has been something you practiced from a very young age. We'll talk a little bit about how you've applied that to the beauty industry, but, but so. let me let me ask you. You know, a decade ago, a chiropractor was considered alternative medicine. Has that changed today? That's a great comment, and absolutely, it has. It's fascinating to be a part of this, to be in the midst of this uh, this historical transformation, if you will, over time. Because absolutely, ten years ago, the um, the sort of collective impression of chiropractic, both from within the healthcare world um, and from a general public standpoint, was it was much more controversial. It was fringe. It wasn't so well defined. Um, it was a real mixed bag, and there was a lot of animosity coming from the medical community um, that was based in sort of a historical uh, legal battle that the two professions had. Um, and uh, in, in recent years, over this last 10 years, that's changed radically and, and uh, mostly because of, um, well, it's kind of complex, but a combination of the educational institutions doing a really, really great job around the world and being really thorough and evidence-based and having really high standards for their education and the new generation of students um, and practitioners, but also politically, chiropractors have really done a lot to all over the world, um, particularly in Canada and the States, to really uh, have great regulation and great policies and great presence in the, the legal healthcare world. So um, they've really earned the respect of the rest of the mainstream medical world, and there's been a lot of integration since. So you'll see chiropractors in hospitals all, all around the world now, quite commonly, especially here in Toronto and parts of the state. A lot of uh, uh, most healthcare clinics, at least in this around where, where I, I am, um, will have family doctors medical specialists and chiropractors all side by side they all so uh, there's been a theme towards a movement towards collaboration that's been the biggest transition mm -hmm. chiropractors used to be these yeah very alternative sort of on their own people would go to them as a as a last resort or, or something else but now it's it's sort of part of the, the core healthcare team that most people have 
And it's interesting that that it is it's really more of a holistic approach. But when most people are seeking the services of a chiropractor, what are the symptoms that are going on that would make someone uh, seek out your services? Pain. Pain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So there's, there's a lot of different things that we we can address, mm -hmm. but most people um, end up seeking out a chiropractor because they've hurt themselves and there's nobody more uh, well equipped to deal with musculoskeletal injuries which basically muscles, bones, joints and the spine and the, as well as the nervous system. So, so things, uh, spinal injuries, disc herniations, arthritis, headaches, ankle injuries, those kind of things. So we're very well suited to deal with, with physical injuries, much more so than, than most other healthcare professionals and so that's where most people end up finding chiropractic care useful. Right. So how did you discover um, I, the, the need specifically of the beauty professional? And I think it goes back to that great story that you told earlier about shadowing, find, identifying 42 different possible professions, and you decided to go watch them work. It sounds like you did the same thing with the beauty professional. Mm. Yes, um, quite similar. I, I was in practice, my very first practice in 2012. Um, I set up in, in Midtown Toronto here, and um, there was a handful of uh, hair salons all around my neighborhood, and one in particular was a really big, prominent one that's been around for quite some time with maybe 45, 50 stylists, and then all the support staff, a very big place, right next to my clinic. And so over the course of building my practice, I ended up meeting and treating a lot of the hairstylists that worked there. And what happened um, basically is uh, that I, after treating several and a few dozen hairstylists, I started noticing very distinct patterns, very things that were very common among stylists. And I thought that's, that's not a coincidence. Um, you know, they come in with very similar shoulder injuries, very similar types of low back pain and wrist issues and, and whatnot. And, and I thought, well, it's one thing for me to keep treating these and just making them feel better, healing their injuries, and then setting them back up to their environment that now I see has caused that. So I thought I would help to figure out what was the causal factors, what, what were contributing to these injuries happening in the first place. So I just went over, and, and they were very friendly, and uh, I started um, uh, observing. I, I made up a research methodology. I created a, an assessment, and I, I started to watch hairstylists while they work, obviously with their permission, and, and made sure they were okay with that. But I would watch them and make notes on their postures, and then I started to piece together that the, the people who were injuring their shoulders were doing this and the people who weren't were not. Or I started to pick up those things. Um, and so I, I kept documenting that and picking up more and more. And then after a, a while of doing that, over a year or two, I, I started to be able to teach the hairstylist that, okay, I, they come in with the pain, I treat their injury, and then I could teach them. I say, you know what, hold the, hold the blow dryer like, like this instead, and that will probably resolve your your problem sustainably and uh, that caught on and I've been doing it since that's great so tell us tell us let's start with the hairdresser what what are some of the the, the activities that a hairdresser is doing that um, will lead to some of those classic problems that's a good question the most common thing is well the clearly standing up all day is is potentially strenuous mm -hmm. um, that's that's something hairstyles all have in common, and a lack of, of breaks. Most people work uninterrupted or, or uh, they're, they're all quite busy all the time. The other thing is, is having your arms up above your shoulders. So having your elbows up, shoulders raised, that's, that's a, a really well-defined risk factor uh, sort of across the board in any industry um, doing anything. So hairstyles in particular, they, they have such a demand to have their hands up while they're working on a client, um, and it's inescapable. So it's a, a big risk that sort of puts all, a ton of strain, a uh, disproportionate amount of strain on the shoulders, the elbows, the wrists, and the, the neck. Um, so the low back from standing so much, the feet and, and some leg issues, but most prominently is, is the upper limb and, and the neck and upper back area. I, I have yet to meet a hairstylist who doesn't have a very tense upper back. <laughs> yeah, that's and very interesting because I never even, I wouldn't have even, I wouldn't have guessed the neck. Um, but uh, that does make that makes a tremendous amount of sense in terms of mm -hmm. holding your arms up above, you know, your your elbows particularly are above, are, uh, you know, head head height. What mm -hmm. about um, what about some of the other areas? Do you find that there is as clear 
um, um, observation of potential injury for, say, a, an, an esthetician who's doing facials all day long. Absolutely. Um, the estheticians have, uh, this is more of a diversity of setups in mm -hmm. terms of how they use their equipment, how they're positioned, how they sit, how they, but predominantly it's, it's the bending forward, leaning forward, and uh, that, that is most strenuous for estheticians because they're hovering over a client mm -hmm. and they're usually in a low stool bent over, hunched over, and so it's usually spinal stuff, um, spinal stuff and neck stuff, because you can imagine um, y your head is, is like a bowling ball. Mm -hmm. uh, the average person's head weighs anywhere between 10 and 12 or 13 pounds, and that's quite heavy. And your neck muscles are really small. And so if you imagine, like, hold, hold a bowling ball out in front of you with your arms straight and see how long you can hold that, we could all imagine that it would only be a few minutes before our arm completely is fatigued and we have to drop it. So our little muscles, which are smaller than our big arm muscles, are doing that for hours and hours at a time. And so it's, it's actually an under um, uh, or less known uh, problem with estheticians is, is the neck stuff. But uh, definitely low back because of the, the bending over all the time for long periods of time uninterrupted. That's the biggest risk factor there. And would it be common then also would be a similar type of, of thing when it comes to um, nails? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. There's the same thing, and there's the added thing with nails because it's so uh, such fine, detailed work. Uh -huh. There's always the tensed, hunched-up shoulders uh -huh. because that's part of the the process of of keeping the shoulder stable when you're doing intricate work with your hands is tensing it up and bringing your shoulders up and forward, and that puts a lot of strain on the upper back. So as well as the low back because of the sitting and the bending over. With, that, uh, with, with nail technicians, it's definitely the, um, uh, the upper shoulders as well, upper back. And I would think also is the repetitive motion with regards to filing, does that, does that play a part Absolutely. in it all? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know all this from personal experience, don't you? <laughs> I do. And as you're talking, I'm just thinking about the kinds of pain, aches and pains I've had over the years, and it's like, oh, that's why <laughs> I do have an amazing uh, strength in my neck. You know, I'm, uh, I was actually just working out last night, and um, I can hold my head up for a really, really long time <laughs> off the ground. So that doesn't I guess me, I know yeah. why now, huh? Yeah, yeah. Is there, are there any, like with make, uh, doing a makeup application, is that another area, or even the shampoo assistants working in the salon, are there some classic um, injuries that are more common with those uh, um, areas? Absolutely, yeah. The, the, the makeup application is, is similar to a nail technician in the sense that it requires the fine, uh, the, the really fine work with the arms, and so the shoulders get tensed up, uh, as well as the low back oftentimes. And just the fact that you're staying in one position or, or, or not moving a heck of a lot for, for big periods of time, as well as the repetitive strain of, of specific motions, mm -hmm. that's a, a bad combination or a strenuous combination. Mm -hmm. And um, for people doing a lot of shampoos, absolutely. There's, there's, again, always a diversity with uh, equipment and setup, the way salons are designed, how tall the sinks are and everything like that. Some are ergonomic, most aren't. Um, but the bottom line is that the leaning forward is really strenuous on the low back um, and the upper back more so the low back with people doing a lot of shampooing. Right. And so low back injuries are the most common there. And so from an equipment standpoint, do you, are, the, are the sinks where the professional is approaching the client from behind, is that, is that healthier for the professional? Than the side, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. The so. side is, is a very uh, bad setup for the body, and the twisting is, is a lot more, uh, adds a lot more compression on the spine than just straightforward bending. So bending is, is a little strenuous when you're doing it for a long period of time. Bending and twisting is mm -hmm. much worse. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the, uh, the other one that, that comes to mind is where, as I'm thinking about all of the different activities that I did, st did standing behind the chair, is pumping the, 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 the chair up, uh, bringing the, you know, how the chairs have a pump and, yep. and we bring the client up. I would, I would suggest that that's actually a, a very good thing, a positive thing. Uh -huh. it, it breaks up, the in, it interrupts the cycle of, um, of st 
staying in one position. So okay. you're lifting your leg, you're using it, you're moving it. And the, more importantly, the effect of having the chair in adequate height uh-huh. reduces the strain on the rest of your body. Right. So I would argue that's, I would suggest that's a, a good thing, yeah, a good effect on the body. Right, okay. So it's really helping the hairdresser to understand all of those various different activities as well as equipment. Now, I would think um, it, holding a blow dryer, is that another area that can be problematic? Yes, and it's one I've discovered in recent years to be somewhat controversial, too. <laughs> There's a lot to speak on there. But a blow dryer is uh, quite heavy, but it's not so much that it's, it's, it's heavy. It's, it's, actually, the, the newer ones are, are getting lighter and lighter. But it's actually the, the torque on the wrist that causes the strain because of the, the way that people hold it. Oh. So holding something heavy for long periods of time with a repetitive motion will definitely strain the wrist, yeah. Okay, great. All right, well, we're going to take a a break now that we know all of the problems (laughs) that uh, you can see in the salon. And if anybody who's been to a salon having their hair done or actually works in one, all of this makes a tremendous amount of sense. And when we come back, we'll focus on uh, these injuries and and look at some of the tips uh, that uh, the doctor has developed to avoid them and uh, help hairdressers be more healthy doing their work. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Over here, here's a secret for a virus-free computer. ESET, they've been a pioneer in the antivirus industry for over 25 years. 25 years of innovative, top-rated antivirus protection. ESET's award-winning security solutions provide a safe online experience for over 100 million home and business computer owners. They are so affordable, fast, and simple to use. So be gone, you blue screen of death. ESET's on my computer. If it's not on yours, visit HealthyLife.net's advertiser page and click on ESET now. Here's the thing about beauty. It's pretty. At AmericanMadeBeauty.com, we're all about the pretty, making it easier for you to find what makes your beauty shine. We have essentially everything you need, and AmericanMadeBeauty.com celebrates brands that were created right here in the U.S. of A. Imagine everything you need from the best hair, skin, and nail products to makeup and even the tools because it's all about pretty at AmericanMadeBeauty.com. We also think you're pretty important, so visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com. Browse, buy, learn. AmericanMadeBeauty.com. We're looking for a few good American beauty manufacturers who want to increase their brand in an exclusive credentialed category. If you're an American company who has conceived, designed, and bottled brands that are all about pretty, then we're pretty sure we're talking about you. And we're pretty sure you should be on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. This beauty website focuses on entrepreneurs and beauty startups as well as established brands. If it's pretty, we want to see it, and we want to sell it on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. To learn how you can be part of AmericanMadeBeauty.com, visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com now. What does HealthyLife.net and Amazon.com have in common? Well, they're both available on the Internet. They both give great value. But most important, most of our positive program hosts and guests are accomplished authors, and their books are available from, you got it, Amazon.com. Now it even gets better than that, because when you're listening on air to a HealthyLife.net host or guest, you can go directly to Amazon.com, and you can order your book while you're still listening to your favorite HealthyLife.net program. So when you hear an author you like, go to the homepage of HealthyLife.net and click on Amazon.com. Where positive people and radio unite. HealthyLife.net Welcome. You're listening to Radio AMB on HealthyLife.net. I'm Patty Smucker, your host, and we're here with Dr. Jonas Aford, a chiropractor and uh, consultant based in Toronto, Canada, who's been fascinated by health and the human condition. In this segment that we call In the Jar, uh, Dr. Aford um, is going to uh, tell us a little bit more about the activities that he's observed in the beauty environment uh, that's that's leading um, to physical injuries. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of the ways that these things can be uh, avoided. So... um, you know, we talked uh, earlier in the last segment about uh, the conditions for a hairdresser. Tell us a little bit about what a hairdresser can do in their work practice so that they don't have some of these common problems. Okay, there's a lot to talk about here. Uh, we can. Um, I'm, I'm going to envision someone's body, and we can work, say, bottom up. Okay. 
um, because there's a lot, a lot going on. Um, so from the bottom, people's feet. Footwear is obviously important. Everybody can can understand that. Um, despite that, I, I see more often than not hairstylists wearing inadequate footwear. I just want to make something sort of simple for for people listening. Is that uh, supportive, good supportive footwear does, is not necessarily the sort of unfashionable Birkenstock or, or orthopedic shoe type that people imagine when you think that. Um, I'll be really quick and focus on practical measures here. When you're choosing footwear of any variety, it doesn't matter if it's a high heel or a, a flat or anything in between, a running shoe, the best thing you can do to make sure that the footwear is supporting you really, really adequately is test the firmness of the sole of the shoe. Mm -hmm. And the way you do that is when you're shopping or looking at a shoe or checking one out or even testing your own, just try and twist the shoe like a wet rag. Okay. And if the sole twists easily, that's not a very supportive shoe. Uh -huh. It's really that simple. And then if you bend it from the toe to the heel, try to bend it in half, if it bends really easily in the middle, also not supportive. Mm -hmm. So just those two simple things, trying to bend it in the middle. Shoes will always bend at the toes, and that's because that's the way where our foot bends. Obviously, at the base of the toe, the, the ball of the, uh, the the ball of the foot, and that's normal. But two inches or so back from that, into the middle of the, the the shoe or the foot, that's where it's not supposed to bend. So taking a shoe and and um, doing those two tests to make sure your footwear is supportive is so so important, considering how much time you spend on it. Um, it's doing a, a lot of work to absorb the, the forces while you're moving around throughout the day that your foot is otherwise absorbing and being strained by if you don't wear good shoes. And so, so you're, just, say, you're saying that, that it, it's not necessarily – those apply to any type of shoe. Exactly. But even standing behind a chair and standing on your feet in high heels, you, you're, not, you're saying that that's not necessarily bad? Correct. Oh, wow, I, okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a unique voice. Most most uh, healthcare professionals tend to rag on people wearing high heels. I think it's okay as long as you do it intelligently, as uh -huh. long as you know how it's affecting your body and uh -huh. you put a little effort into mitigating the effect. The way I teach my stylists and, and, and patients to do that is just to understand that what you're doing is shortening the calf and shortening the what's called the plantar fascia, the bottom of the foot, and you're bending the back backwards. You're curving the back backwards a little bit more. So those three things are, are the most comp uh, prominent things that are happening to your body when you're wearing high heels for long periods of time. Therefore, to mitigate that, you just, when you're home or on your break or when you have a minute, take the uh, uh, bottom of your foot and stretch it out. Roll it on top of a, a frozen water bottle or a golf ball and then stretch your calves on a stair. Put your foot on the stair and put your heel down. And then stretch your low back forward. So do a, a, a child's pose in yoga, for instance. Those three things will help to balance out the body from the strain. So go ahead and wear high heels. If, if that's important to you and it makes you feel great, wonderful. That's good. Just do it intelligently and right. do it to mitigate the effects. Well, and, do, and like you said, just those three simple things in terms of stretching at the end of the day, what a huge, I mean, it's like, it does make a, a big difference because it is a fashion business. So that, that's a, a huge piece to be able to do. So mm -hmm. we've, we've gone from the feet, so that addresses sort of the standing part. Where, where do we go next? To the low back. Okay. There's a lot to talk about with the pelvis, the core, and the low back and the spine. So I'll, I'll just bring up that the most important things to consider here are I, I want to try to help people imagine the, the way the core works in, its, in, in reality. Uh, most people don't understand, and understanding can really help you do a better job at keeping it happy, keeping your whole spine and your, your core and everything else happy. And that the way it works is like the core is like a cylinder of muscle tissue all around the spine. The spine is what's most important to protect. That's where the pain is generated when people have problems most of the time, and that's what's getting compressed throughout the day. And when we have a weak core, that cylinder of muscles is floppy, and the weight of gravity of your body weight compressing down in your spine is increased. If your core is strong and it's, what happens is it serves as a pillar virtually to support the weight of your body so that it doesn't all compress your spine. So that's 
generally implies the importance of having a strong core and working on it. And the way we do that at work, which is I, I always help people understand that it's better to improve the way you're doing things at work because you're spending several hours a day doing that instead of going to the gym for 20 minutes or an hour at the end of a day, even a handful of times a week. It's not nearly as effective. So change the way you work, and you won't even have to go to the gym to be healthy. And um, the way we do that is by becoming more aware of your spinal position. So oftentimes people will lean to one side, lean to the other, leaning on your hip. That's okay. That's because one side is tired and the other one wants to uh, compensate. So just be aware of that and stop yourself from leaning on one side too often. The other thing is to, when you're working on a client, engage your core gently by spreading your feet a little bit, bending your knees, and squeezing your butt together. Sounds ridiculous. Nobody will even notice you're doing it. But say it again. You you said three things. Yes. So spread your feet to about shoulder width. Uh Don't stand with your feet right next to each other or one in front of the other. Stand in a wide stance and uh, bend your knees slightly, just so slightly, so that they're not locked straight, and then squeeze your butt together. Okay. It's kind of a shortcut for your body to put itself in the right position. So and that's a position that sort of you're ready. Your, your body is balanced, you're ready, your, your core is activated, and you're symmetrical. And if you just keep that as your, as your baseline position and keep finding that, once you catch yourself leaning or being a little floppy or you feel a little strain in your low back, reset yourself to that position. And you'll find the more you do it, the more your body will be accustomed to it, and it'll serve you well over time. It's a long-term strategy. Right, right. But I love what you just said, though, that if you can learn and to be aware, well, first I heard aware, so that if you do certain things, you know, if that's okay, but just be aware and have this reset that you do regularly, but you want to practice it in your work environment because we spend so much of our day uh, doing that so you can have the best form in the world when you go to work out, but if the rest of the time you're not, uh, you're not supporting uh, that that pillar uh, that you so you, you really created a great visual picture of that core, which is that pillar that supports our spine. Precisely, and there's actually something I, I'd love to elaborate on because just that idea really excites me. Movement that you're doing at work, you're going to be doing that movement anyway. You might as well make it a good one. If you right. do it better, it's contributing to your health. If you do it poorly, it's detracting from your health. Makes sense. Absolutely. The last thing is just to remember to bring your shoulder blades into your back pockets. That's the way I visualize it. So squeeze your shoulder blades gently together and gently down, and that will keep your upper body posture in impeccable condition no matter what you're doing as long as you keep that as your baseline posture. That's sort of a, a, the, the most fundamental improvement any hairstylist can make to their upper body, neck, shoulders, and upper back. Okay, great. Well, we're going to take another break, and when we come back, we'll continue and talk about some of the other functional areas, look at the rest of the body to figure out how to create a safer, healthier work environment for a salon professional. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Here's the thing about beauty. It's pretty. At AmericanMadeBeauty.com, we're all about the pretty, making it easier for you to find what makes your beauty shine. We have essentially everything you need, and AmericanMadeBeauty.com celebrates brands that were created right here in the U.S. of A. Imagine everything you need from the best hair, skin, and nail products to makeup and even the tools because it's all about pretty at AmericanMadeBeauty.com. We also think you're pretty important, so visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com. Browse, buy, learn. AmericanMadeBeauty.com. For all your live or pre-recorded webcasting needs, come to earthchannel.com. Get your web-based message out to a select group or the whole world. It's easy. A pioneer in webcasting, earthchannel.com provides the best products and services to big corporations and government users. And now, this same technology is available to you. They have the best earthcast encoders, servers, and products to meet your technical needs. But wait, don't want to mess with technical stress? No problem. They'll do it for you. EarthChannel.com is your answer. You can use webcasting for lots of things like advertising, marketing, customer support, training, and don't forget, web radio and TV. In fact, you're listening to a live EarthCast right now. So come to EarthChannel.com. Actualize your audio or video webcasting needs today. You can't beat the friendly service or the price. 
Call earthchannel.com at 1-800-849-8978. That's 1-800-849-8978. We're looking for a few good American beauty manufacturers who want to increase their brand in an exclusive credentialed category. If you're an American company who has conceived, designed, and bottled brands that are all about pretty, then we're pretty sure we're talking about you. And we're pretty sure you should be on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. This beauty website focuses on entrepreneurs and beauty startups as well as established brands. If it's pretty, we want to see it, and we want to sell it on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. To learn how you can be part of AmericanMadeBeauty.com, visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com now. When you're looking for bedding, department store prices can shock you. Well, be shocked no more. Sell steak cheap, not cheap steak. That's the motto of Anna's Linens. Although they don't sell steak, they do sell the best bedding, bath, and home decor items. They strive to provide their merchandise at extreme value to their customers, and they do it. Great everyday prices on everything and military discounts. Plus, if you visit them online, they have clearance items and Internet specials. Visit them online now at HealthyLife.net's advertiser page. Radio your way. HealthyLife.net Welcome back. You're listening to Radio AMB on HealthyLife.net. I'm Patty Smucker, and we're here with Dr. Jonas Aford, a chiropractor, consultant, and published author of the book Healthy Hairstylist. And we've been talking about what are some of the injuries that occur as a result of the environment in a professional salon. In our last segment, we talked, uh, we started at the feet, and we're talking about some of the ways that you can um, change what you're doing in order to have a healthier body. So, Doctor, we were at the feet, and we had moved to the back. Um, where do we go next? Next, let's move up to the shoulders. Okay. So the shoulders are so important to learn how to improve the way they move because that's where most of the action is, and that's also where most of the strain comes about, the cumulative strain. What I mean by that is when you're doing something over and over again, day in and day out for days, months, years at a time, it takes a toll on your body if it's not or if it's too much, if it's excessive, and if you're not doing anything to mitigate that, which is very common amongst ourselves because the demand is so high on the shoulders. Mm -hmm. And so we're always reaching forward, and even worse, if you are with your arm up, your elbow and your wrist up to your shoulder height or higher, and with your arm tilted in, inwards, those are the worst, most compromised, most strenuous positions for the shoulder. So that also so happens to be the position our arm is in when you're working on a client. Right, when you're cutting hair. (laughs) Exactly. So it it, it puts you at such a high risk for straining the shoulders, and that's why most people, if they don't develop better techniques, they will suffer shoulder injuries probably prematurely, and I've seen too many hairstylists and met too many people who have left the hairstyling and salon world because of problems in their shoulders. And I believe that one must learn to understand what's happening and then be disciplined, a little bit disciplined or just mindful about incorporating improvements to the way that they move them. And the way I suggest they do that is, like I mentioned just before the break, bringing your shoulder blades back and down as the default position. Mm-hmm. There's a very important difference that happens, and it's more, even more significant than we realize because it's a rather subtle movement when we do that. But the position of the rotator cuff muscles, those are the muscles that move your shoulder, um, the position of those muscles is much healthier when your shoulder blades are back and together than if your arm is reached forward with your shoulder blade reaching with it. That compromises them, and holding them back frees them. So it's something that it takes some discipline, much like changing any habit does, to continually remind yourself until it becomes automatic. Right, right. So that's the number one thing. Mm -hmm. The second thing that I think is really helpful to know for hairstylists is that when you're doing something, when you are doing something that strains your body and you can't escape it, so you're doing it and you have to do it because it's your work and that's, that's the task at hand, what you can do is mitigate the strain by doing some other things before, during, or after you're working that will help to offset the impact of that strain on your shoulders particularly. And that can be really anything 
as long as it's very different from what you're doing when you're working, which is having your shoulders up and out in front of you. Mm -hmm. So you can get a tennis ball, a lacrosse ball, a golf ball. I use what's called an accu ball, a little ball with bumps on it. You can get something like that and just frequently and sporadically just roll up against a wall all around your shoulder blade. Seems like a simple thing. It is a simple thing. But if you do it frequently, you're massaging the muscles all around, and so the tension that's building up cumulatively over time, you're helping to break it down as it's building up. So that's just a very small thing. You have a little ball lying around the, the break room in the salon or at home, and when you get home or when you're in, on a break at work, you go and you roll around on it. There's things like that, learning specific stretches like the many that I have in my book that will target specific muscles to help to reduce the strain, that type of thing. Also, any activity at all that uses the arms in different ways is going to be helpful. The reason is, it, it, it's hard for a lot of people to understand this, but if you do something more strenuous with your body, like say you finish a eight-hour shift and you've seen 20 clients in the day or 10 clients and, and you finish, and then you go to the gym and start doing some heavy weightlifting, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's actually beneficial, right. assuming you're weightlifting with good technique, because you're straining the body but in a very different way. Right. Right. It turns out our bodies are very robust. They can handle a lot of exertion mm -hmm. as long as it's not too much of any one thing. So go swimming, go do yoga, go do stretching, go do rolling on a ball, go to a massage therapist, anything at all. The more you do that's different, the better it's going to be. Right. So, and so um, let's talk about the neck because yeah. that seems like that would be that, that's an obvious next step uh, yes. that, where there's a lot of strain. There's a core principle I'd like to start with, which is that, that when the head migrates forward, it strains the head, the neck, and the shoulders. Mm -hmm. When the head is back, right aligned above your, aligned on your spine above your shoulders or straight with your body, which is not so much of the time, that's okay. So when you tuck your chin, that brings your head right back to a neutral position. So always remind yourself to tuck your chin, particularly if you're feeling strain in your neck and your upper back. Tuck your chin should be the default position. Now, what happens is when we're working on something and our attention is in front of us, we're reaching for it with our arms, our head tends to naturally just migrate forward almost immediately because that's a demonstration with our body, uh, our body language that we're paying attention, that we're focused on the, on the task. What I, I want to help people try and be mindful of is it, that's very strenuous on the neck, going back to the bowling ball analogy, and to remind yourself to tuck your chin, it helps you actually compose your body language and the way you're positioned around your client, which gives, um, and this is a really soft observation and just my personal opinion, but it gives an air of confidence and through your body language that is positive. So right. by helping yourself anatomically, you may also be having a, a positive effect on the relationship between you and your client. So that's a little tip. Keep your, keep your chin tucked to reduce the amount of tension on the neck muscles, which incidentally also tends to decrease the amount of headaches that people have sometimes. Headaches can be caused by the tight muscles in the back of your neck being pulled and strained and tight all the time. And so reducing that amount of strain can actually resolve or reduce some types of headaches in, in their style. And but when you're talking about a uh, like a massage, like uh, doing a manicure, or I would say even as I think about doing a massage, it, it seems I I, it, I I guess I would have to practice the, that it can be done in such a way where the head isn't leaned forward because if I'm leaning down to do a manicure, it would just seem it just seems natural to me that my head is going to come forward. Um, and I, I guess I would really have to practice. Do you find that it's, it's easy for a, um, a manicurist particularly to be able to, to, to develop that discipline to hold the head back? You're absolutely right. It's not easy at all. Mm -hmm. um, it's not easy, but oftentimes people in pain have enough incentive to, <laughs> to execute the discipline required to improve that. Here's, here's a little uh, shortcut, if you will. Move the pelvis instead of the head closer to the client. That sounds goofy, um, but it works. Your pelvis is more or less the center of mass for your body. If you move your pelvis forward, you can have your head back and you'll still be close to your work. So 
you have to sort of think about that and see how it applies to, to your particular situation because it's different for a stylist, for a, someone doing a shampoo and everybody else. So, but, but play around with that idea and what you'll feel is when you bring your pelvis forward, you move your whole body and your center of mass closer to your work and your client and your head can relax a little bit on top of your spine. Right, okay. Makes a tremendous amount of sense. And just as you're talking about it, I can just visualize those various different subtle movements but uh, that, that, that makes sense, and I could. If I bring my chair closer, uh, I, could, I could make that happen. So um, we're going to take our last break, but when we return, we're going to talk about um, Jonah's vision for the future and the type of partner he'd like to attract in order to scale his program and be able to reach a larger audience in the world. So stay with us. Uh, we will be right back. the thing about beauty. It's pretty. At AmericanMadeBeauty.com, we're all about the pretty, making it easier for you to find what makes your beauty shine. We have essentially everything you need, and AmericanMadeBeauty.com celebrates brands that were created right here in the U.S. of A. Imagine everything you need from the best hair, skin, and nail products to makeup and even the tools because it's all about pretty at AmericanMadeBeauty.com. We also think you're pretty important, so visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com. Browse, buy, learn. AmericanMadeBeauty.com. When you're looking for bedding, department store prices can shock you. We'll be shocked no more. Sell steak cheap, not cheap steak. That's the motto of Anna's Linens. Although they don't sell steak, they do sell the best bedding, bath, and home decor items. They strive to provide their merchandise at extreme value to their customers, and they do it. Great everyday prices on everything and military discounts. Plus, if you visit them online, they have clearance items and Internet specials. Visit them online now at HealthyLife.net's advertiser page. We're looking for a few good American beauty manufacturers who want to increase their brand in an exclusive credentialed category. If you're an American company who has conceived, designed, and bottled brands that are all about pretty, then we're pretty sure we're talking about you. And we're pretty sure you should be on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. This beauty website focuses on entrepreneurs and beauty startups as well as established brands. If it's pretty, we want to see it, and we want to sell it on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. To learn how you can be part of American AmericanMadeBeauty.com. Visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com now. Oh, man, it never fails. My suitcase just got ripped apart. Life is a journey. Make it a pleasant one. Use Samsonite. You know the name. For almost a century, Samsonite luggage has proved itself to be the worldwide leader in innovative travel solutions. Let it be yours. Visit HealthyLife.net's affiliate Samsonite on our homepage and click to look at the fine luggage from suitcases to golf travel bags. And don't forget, take a look at their travel accessories. Make life a journey, a pleasant one, with Samsonite. HealthyLife.net, where positive overcomes negative. You're listening to Radio AMB, where we share the secrets behind the beauty industry. Our program sponsor today is Free Your Main. You can go to freeyourmain.com, uh, and you can also go to anthropology stores. You can also find Free Your Main on AmericanMadeBeauty.com, and if you go to the consumer page and go to the beauty box, you can find an opportunity to get free Free Your Main samples. So FreeYourMain.com, it's a hair and skin care brand designed around baobab oil, for hydrating uh, textured and dehydrated hair and skin. In this segment we call Beauty Biz, we're here with Dr. Jonas Aford, a chiropractor, consultant, and published author of the book Healthy Hairstylist. We've uh, spoken um, throughout this program about the typical injuries that occur for beauty professionals in all practices and some of the great ideas that um, the doctor has come up with to help mitigate some of the problems that are characteristic of people who work in this very physical field. So, um, Jonas, tell us a little bit about your, your vision for the future. This has been so insightful uh, for me to learn about the way that uh, you can make such a difference about understanding the body. How do you plan to help reach more people? That's a good question. I've been thinking a lot about that. Um, that's, that's a big reason why I... I 
started doing this in the first place is I recognized the need um, with all the hairstylists and salon professionals that I encountered and worked with. Um, I noticed a distinct lack of, of good uh, high-end, high-level training in terms of um, posture, uh, physical uh, ergonomics, and just injury prevention and injury maintenance, uh, injury management. So generally, I felt that despite it being such an enormous industry, there was not a heck of a lot of really good industry-specific guidance for hairstylists to draw on. And so that's kind of what I'm after, is is I'm hoping to contribute to uh, uh, just a whole world of resources that that whatever best suits people, that they can uh, draw on when they need it. So when hairstylists and, and estheticians and colorists and everyone else, when they're going through training, both initially and in continuing education, I'd hope that this is at least uh, integrated into their core curriculum initially and then as an option for people to improve certain things in continuing education. I'd hope that that's something they'd have access to is really good high-level industry-specific to them um, uh, resources, whether that be um, uh, um, exercises or, or stretches or videos or books or online web portals or or people in their salon trained to to help coach them back to health or whatever whatever form that takes. I'd love to contribute to that. And so this was the first step for me to try and contribute to that is by putting out this book, um, which I'm hoping will serve as as a form of that, as a, as a really solid resource for people to go to either when they're learning how to work in the best way possible or how to treat and manage, self-manage an injury once they have one or any, any painful condition at all, not, not even just an injury. Right. So that's what I'm, I'm striving towards, and I'm looking to, to find partners of any variety um, in this industry who can help contribute as well. So uh, training academies and uh, companies that put on a lot of the both uh, cosmetology training programs and continuing education programs, I feel like this would be very exciting to to collaborate with organizations that do a lot of that education to build my work and what I've learned and everything else around it into their training programs and perhaps down the line create um, a whole set of media and resources so people can have easy access to it. Um, so not just a print book, but maybe the e-book and online videos and a portal online somewhere and, and various other resources. So I, I'd like to look for yeah, any, uh, or, or any organizations within that industry that would be interested in serving that same purpose of helping individual uh, uh, people in the salon industry to, to improve their health. And it sounds, too, I mean, as we're talking, as I was listening to you talk about particularly that one segment where we talked about the whole idea that uh, somebody who is working on something that we're, we're interested in it, so we move our head forward, but the head is like a bowling ball, and it puts a lot of strain on the neck. Mm-hmm. It makes so much sense. It seems that you would also find a good partnership with some equipment manufacturers, people who are ma- physically making the equipment that's being sold into these, these um, businesses, and actually even beyond the, the beauty industry, probably medical as well, to be able to design equipment that these people are using, chairs, manicuring stations, the, the way that, you know, I can get closer, but I've got this big table between me and the client if I'm a manicurist. seems like an equipment manufacturer might be also a great partner for you. Oh, absolutely. That's a really good point because that they have such a big influence over how people um, end up um, um, tolerating the work. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're, you're right that there can be really well-designed things and really poorly designed things, and both exist. But uh, I, I feel that most uh, of the equipment people use, they have no consideration whatsoever for the ergonomic side of things. It's it's purely on aesthetic and um, commercial. Um, you know, industrial design features. Um, there, there's, there's exceptions, of course. I've seen, you know, hair dryers, for instance, that are designed really, really intelligently to be um, really um, minimize the, the weight and also the effect on the wrist and the shoulder when you're using it. 
Um, I've recently come across and, and actually been in communication with the people behind a new product called X-Hand, mm-hmm. E-X-T-Hand, um, which is a new set of shears that's completely different from everything else that, that exists, and it's really cool, and I got quite excited about it, and I, I, I definitely sort of give them my endorsement. And, and what's uh, it, what is it called again? It's called X-Hand, E-X-T-Hand. Okay. And it's a shear that is just getting on the market now. Uh, they, they just launched very, very recently. And what it is is a, a shear that uh, doesn't even have loops. It just has grooves, and you hold it with your palm up. And I was so pleased to see it um, come to market, and I told them that. And that's why I uh, connected, because it has huge implications on the cumulative strain effect on a hairstylist's wrists, shoulders, and neck. And so that coming onto the market, hopefully they, they gain a lot of traction because it can have a huge impact on, on a hairstylist's career. Mm-hmm. You know, so well, it seems to me that, that, that a, a great partnership with you would be anyone where your knowledge can help them design their products uh, better. And, and equipment manufacturers, you, you're thinking shears, I'm thinking tables and chairs, etc. Mm-hmm. I'm also thinking that people who design salons, spas, medical offices, in terms of the actual physical build-out, uh, and those might be, um, uh, you know, great opportunities for you. If someone wanted to reach out to you to collaborate with you and talk to you, what's the best way for people to reach you, doctor? Oh, that's a good question. I, I, I don't know. Um, perhaps email? Okay. And what's the email address? Um, well, uh, Jonas, J-O-N-A-S, okay. at fjordwellness.ca is that's that's my corporation say it again jonas it's, at it's fjord wellness so that's f j o r d wellness w e l l n e s s dot c a all right Canadian, terrific uh, well um doctor thank you and you can also reach out to me and we'll connect you up with uh, with uh, jonas as well thank you for being with us thank you for the work that you're doing and for helping to make um beauty professionals around the world healthier it was such a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks so much for having me. Great. We're going to wrap up with that today, um, and uh, uh, stay tuned. Next week we will have Tanya Crook, the brow gal, will be with us to talk about the explosive growth that's taken place in that area between uh, your cheekbone and your eyebrows. Uh, it will be a fun and fascinating show. Send your questions and comments to requests at American Made Beauty. I am Patty Smucker. You're listening to us on Radio AMB on HealthyLife.net. Thank you for listening to Radio AMB, where we think pretty is pretty important in all things and beauty.